everyone, it's Mia and today we are doing a video all about bath accommodation, very highly requested. This is literally going to be the 101 of everything about all the accommodation, showing you live footage of the accommodation on campus, in town. I'm going to be answering frequently asked questions and also going through undergrad and postgrad accommodation and mixed, like both. I have previously ran through the accommodations but I have so much more info now and I've gathered loads of different people to give me like a review of the one that they stayed in. I'm going to start off with the FAQs. So first one, shared bathrooms. What's it like? So mine were absolutely fine. Obviously an ensuite is nicer, like there's no doubt about it. But I wasn't that bothered. I think it is a bit of luck depending on like who your flatmates are, how clean they are. But I personally didn't mind sharing bathrooms. You do have a cleaner once every two weeks to come and clean it or you can actually clean it yourself if it gets that bad. Next question is about food credit and like is it worth it? Do students prefer it? So I wouldn't want food credit just because you can buy everything that you'd buy with food credit. There's no benefit to having the credit. You could just buy it with money whenever you want. And it's better not to be tied down to a certain amount of money per week. Although it does carry over to the next week and the next year. So if you don't spend all your food credit, it will carry on to second year, third year. You can spend it on campus for your whole uni experience. Although it can never be exchanged for money. I would say only go for food credit if you really love the accommodation that is providing the food credit. For example, if you really want an accommodation with no food credit and you're thinking, oh, should I switch for the credit? Don't, because there's really no point. You could just pay for it with money, like all the food around campus. In one of the reviews of the accommodation, my friend did actually give her opinions on food credit, so stay tuned for that later in the vid. Someone said, is the accommodation first come, first serve? No, for Bath, it is random allocation. I mean, it's kind of annoying in a way, but then also not annoying because you don't have to rush to apply. Like, you've got the whole, or I think you've got over a month to apply. Someone said, how likely is it to get your top choice? So I don't really know the odds, but I know most people got in their top three. I got my second choice. I don't know anyone that's got like their last option, for example. So don't worry too much, but I'm not sure. I think it depends like how popular your accommodation is. So like how many people want to apply for it. Just make sure you're happy with the top three. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the campus accommodations and the lowdown on what everything is like. So, Westwood. I stayed in Westwood Quarry. All of them are pretty much the same. Okay, so that's the laundry building. That's Westwood. This building behind that is Westwood. That is Westwood. That is Westwood. So imagine this is the building. You've got a staircase on either side, five floors. Each floor is your flat. So if I was on floor three, all of that floor is my flatmates and you've got a kitchen at either end and a kitchen in the middle and that was between like 22 people so seven-ish per kitchen and it's really sociable because you've got a lot of flatmates and you obviously bump into everyone on the other floors when like going up and down the stairs so I made friends with people on other floors as well. It's really good to have a sink in your room because it's just so convenient for like brushing your teeth, like washing your face and everything and not having to store stuff in the like main bathroom. Also like people like go to the toilet in the sink at night. I know it's disgusting, I know it's disgusting, but it happens. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is known as like not a nice accommodation. Like a lot of people say it's like such a, like not a nice place and stuff. I think something to bear in mind when I'm playing like all the reviews and stuff is people's experience is not just about the accommodation but like how good of a year they had, their friends, their flatmates, the memories and like yeah like it's not just about the space so so I've always been so positive about my accommodation and it's because like that was like the best year of my life to date. That's probably why I think it's fine because I have so many good memories there and I loved my flatmates so like I really didn't mind that it wasn't fancy. I think that's such a good thing to remember that like accommodation at the end of the day it's not going to matter that much it's more about the people. This is Brendan Court and they did not have those orange things last year on like the benches but like this looks cute now. I have actually been inside here before. It's basically the rooms are like really similar to Westwood and the corridors are similar to Westwood. It's just not as like prison vibe. 
Next one, Eastwood. So these are laid out like houses. So they're like separate buildings, or like some of them are joined, but for, for the most part they're separate buildings. And yeah, like the door and the kitchen is at the bottom, and then you've got like a couple of rooms on each floor and then like a toilet and shower on each floor. These are probably, I think the kitchens are a bit worse in Eastwood than Westwood just because you're sharing with more people. But I'm pretty sure everyone I know that was in Eastwood really liked it. One of the things that's nice about Eastwood is you'll probably make friends with like the houses next to you as well because on some parts of Eastwood, when you're in the kitchen at night, because the kitchen's got like big windows and when the lights are on at night like you could see all the other kitchens around you. There are shared rooms available in Eastwood, I would not recommend having a shared room, I don't know anyone that has and I can't think of one benefit apart from the price. And yeah, I just, you know, you need your own space, 100%. Next is Marlborough and Salisbury, so I would actually choose these if I could go back. I mean, like, I'm really happy with where I was because of the people, but say if I had to choose it based on just the accommodation, they're so nice, really modern, um, like nice big window, all like white decorations. The layout of these is like, so you've got like one big block, but like the middle bit is like outdoors. So imagine like an outdoor staircase going up and then you've got like flats on either side. So like only one side would be your flatmates, but then you're opposite another flat and you would share the same stairs. So you would probably like make friends. Personally, I love my time in Marlborough. It was quite small flat sizes of only six, but because of that, you got to know the rest of the people in your block very well. I'm currently in final year and still living with people who were living in my block in the first year. Uh, one of the best things is that you get an ensuite. Uh, it's very handy to have, especially in first year when you don't know other people that you would be sharing a bathroom with. And it's good just to have your own space. Um, some of the downsides of Marlborough are that the kitchen um, is a good size for 60 feet, but there's not really a social space. Um, the likes of quads uh, have big social areas where you can all meet up and stuff, which are quite good to go to. But uh, unfortunately, Marlborough doesn't have that. Um, but it is in a good location. Uh, the rooms are a good size. And yeah, it's very handy to get to all your lectures and stuff compared to other uh, accommodation, which might be further out. Um, yeah, so overall, love my time in Marlborough and would definitely stay there again. Next one is Norwood. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, obviously from the outside, Norwood does not look nice. It kind of does look like it's been burned from the outside. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know why it looks like that. So you've got seven to 11 people, two bathrooms. As for the normal rooms in Norwood, they are much, not much bigger. They are bigger than Eastwood and Westwood. Another thing to note, it's above the student union. So if you are like more quieter, not up for partying, then probably don't pick this one because you can't choose which floor. And if you're on the bottom floor, which is right above the SU, then it's gonna be loud. And on Wednesdays and Saturdays, the student union is like a club. So it'll be loud until like two or three. Then we've got Polden and Polden Court. So Polden is the really nice one, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so see the difference between Polden Court and Polden. So don't get these mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I thought that these were just for post-grad students, but I'm not actually sure now. The rooms are really nice. I'm pretty sure they have double beds. Very expensive, obviously. I would say only get the expensive accommodations if you're like comfortable with money, because if you're like not sure or like kind of in the middle, I would say go for a cheaper one because you probably won't look back. Like you're not gonna get to uni meet all your friends be having a good time and then think like oh i wish i picked a nicer accommodation like you probably just won't look back and i probably could have afforded like a more expensive accommodation but i much prefer having that extra money to go out and like live and like have experiences and stuff because that's what uni is about like it's way more important to be able to like do all that fun stuff. Oh, I forgot to say Polden Court, like that's pretty much the same as Westwood. Like everything I said about Westwood, like that's pretty much Polden Court, I think, but I've not been in it. Then we've got Woodland, um, quite similar to Polden, but I would say probably more sociable because it's like more, sh only undergrad, I think. And these have en suites and double beds, so kind of elite. I do think it was really expensive. I think it was a bit overpriced for what it was, but then it wasn't that much of an issue for me because we had, um, obviously the rent rebate at the end so i don't i didn't say as much of an issue but i do think it's slightly overpriced the rooms are nice because you have a small double bed and i think we might be the only accommodation on campus with small double beds i could be wrong though um and the ensuite was big and the rooms were really really nice massive desk and loads of plug sockets which i think was really useful 
Um, I imagine this is the same in absolutely every accommodation, but it is quite noisy in the sense that you can literally hear everything in the corridor from inside the room. The kitchen is huge, the kitchen is really nice, and also I think the highlight of the kitchen is that I think a lot of places like Quads, I think, and Marlborough and Salisbury didn't have this to the extent we had the amount of social space we had in the sense that we had a big dining table with loads of chairs, a bar, and two sofas, because then we could all get together in there and it's a good place to do prees. And because it's big, everyone would come around to our flat as opposed to us going anywhere else. The only thing I didn't like, it depends what course you're doing, because I was, obviously I do psychology, and the psychology building is 10 West. 10 West? Yeah. Uh, was it? Yeah, 10 West, and I was Woodland, so obviously that's the complete opposite ends of campus. So when I used to have like 8.15am labs, it was a bit of a pain in the ass having to walk all the way across the entirety of campus. But it, 7 out of 10, but my actual critique is accommodation team, but I don't know if this is the same for everyone, but the accommodation team are absolutely shit. My door broke, and it was broken for days, so I just couldn't close my door. Um, I imagine this is also the same in everyone, but the accommodation team are really strict, and you literally can't have anything in the corridor. And that pissed me off. If I was to go back into Percy, I would want Woodland Court again, because the other thing I like is that it had floor space. So you could like stretch or do yoga or do a workout in your room, which I don't think you could really do in any of the other accommodations, but I have no idea. And lastly, we have got quads. I would say quads is like where it's at in terms of being sociable, because they've got these like big lounges, and I think you have about 40 people on one floor. Good things about this is there's TVs in the room, they've got mood lighting, they've got the big social spaces, no other accommodation has a kitchen and a lounge, like usually it's in one. It was shit, it was a shit hole, it was, it was weird <laughs> people in there. <laughs> don't do, go, don't do that. That is our experience. Oh my god. Rooms are too small. Um, they're all right, like if, with the bathroom and stuff, it doesn't feel like that small, but then obviously like it does get a bit claustrophobic at times, I don't know. Does yeah, it's it, do you think? Do you think it's worth the money? No. Mm, no. I personally thought it was worth it though to have like my toilet. own ensuite, yeah. your own toilet, your own shower. Kitchen was decent because we had quite a few uh, hobs. hobs. Do you think it's good because it's like quite sociable or? No. We weren't lucky with like the people we were with, like being like, <laughs> yeah, you know, being yeah. sociable. But I think like I went to some quads. Um, I was, we were in Quads Ebony, which I think is like the quieter one. Okay. Um, but then with the other ones, I don't know what they're called, like the A, B, C, D, D Quads. I think they were quite lively. So no, you couldn't pick, but you like... You could only pick a quiet corridor or a non-alcoholic corridor. All girls. Yeah, I was... Was... Did you pick um, quiet? I picked mm, quiet, yeah. Only because like I didn't want like... Yeah, you didn't want parties didn't want and stuff. Like, yeah. be woken up in the middle of the night, basically. But I, I wouldn't say it was quite. It was that quiet because I was. I right, didn't pick anything, and I was in a. Room. I was right next to the lounge, and like I could hear like obviously parties and stuff. But then I obviously didn't pick like the non-alcoholic floor because. Yeah, because lounge was there. <laughs> Did you have like parties in like the social space, you know, like the lounge? Yeah, the lounges are quite good. Usually, the boys like love to like play on what were they playing FIFA and stuff oh, yeah. like the we boys were constantly in there as well yeah we some some like close groups would like watch films in the lounge area and like yeah there were some parties there do you think it's worth having the eat and drink credit or would you prefer to just like buy it with money i didn't in first it, year but i you did. did use it in the mm. sports cafe mm. i did use it but in second year i would not because yeah. I know, like, I actually like cooking. Not like cooking, but... Yeah, you've, like, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you get into a routine It was then. good, In like, when we really couldn't be bothered to cook. Because we literally would go, like, yeah. get... I don't know. Mine was more between stuff. training. Like, yeah. I'd have lectures and I'd have to, like, run across campus. Yeah. Tomorrow. But for me, it was more, like, because I knew I had it, I would use it. Mm. I was really happy I had quads because without my own, like, bathroom, I don't know how. Yeah. Have, like, the bathroom was the only good thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and is it like the the reason you say like it was shit is that mostly because of the people? Do you think the people? Yeah, think... And it was quite claustrophobic towards the end because mm. also because of the shape of the building, I was opposite another like corridor, so oh, I had so shutters and I didn't right want to open there. my shutters, yeah. so I had it closed the whole time. And it was like a prison in there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Everywhere in the courts there would be like socials. So when you weren't going out, you had all the chance for the socials. Oh, right. When yeah. you're like trying to do your assignment to like 
Well, it's longer than all it. And you would just hear this like chanting. It's like, shut up. So, this is what the quads ones are like. So, it's like an arrow. So, there's one quad there, one there, one there and one there. So like these two will share this lounge and then these two will share this lounge. And unfortunately, I don't know anything about the ones in town. Like I really don't like John, John Court, what's it called? John Woodcourt, no idea. And I've not even seen them. Like I can't think where they are in town, but I'm sure the fact that they're in the center of town makes me think that they wouldn't be as modern because like a lot of the buildings in Bath are quite old but don't quote me on that. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about private accommodation so everything I just said was university accommodation. You can actually get student accommodation not provided by the university but it's still for students and only students will be there. So this section of the video is actually sponsored by Amber Student Accommodation and Oh my god, when I tell you these are the nicest accommodations. I will insert some photos here of the ones in Bath. And this is available to anyone, like you can stay here, like whatever student you are, but it's mostly recommended for postgrad students. So if you're a postgrad, listen up. And it's not just one type of accommodation building, it's like any sort of accommodation, any style, any budget that you can imagine, like you can look at it through this website. It's kind of like shopping for a hotel, kind of, on this website, it's so fun. And they actually have it in every, like pretty much every city. They have like definitely over a hundred cities on there and it's all around the world as well. So if you're doing like placement or year abroad, you could even look on here for that. And I've actually visited one of their accommodations in Bath, which is in the most amazing location. It's by the riverside and it's really central to town. It's just so beautiful there. So yeah, I'll insert the footage of it. What sort of students do you get renting here? Is it like first years, final years? Um, it's or? a little bit mixed, to be honest. The first, I've been here three years now. The first year we had a lot of first years. Um, last year we had more kind of later on. So kind of like third year around-ish. We mm -hmm. do have a few second years, but we get post a lot of postgrads as well. Okay. People doing their masters. Yeah. So this one could be a little bit quieter one of the buildings because it's a bit smaller um, I think a lot of first years prefer some of the bigger buildings because it's a bit more lively yeah, <laughs> as such yeah. um, but we get maybe more of the kind of older students coming really like it's so yeah. nice by the river and everything that's the nice thing about, about these rooms actually because they've got balconies uh, ooh. a lot of places don't have them it's so good for a student room because usually you don't have much space. Yeah, <laughs> but... it's more lived in like this as well. Yeah. With like little features like the light ring. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice that it's got a balcony. You can open the door if you like. Okay, thanks. In the downstairs spaces, um, is there like, is it usually full, like people kind of like chatting and like, do they mix a lot or do they usually kind of like keep to themselves? Or... Um, it's a bit um, different times. Different times of the year, it's a little bit different. So people do interact a lot throughout the year, especially with it being a co-living building. So you actually see, you meet a lot more people from different backgrounds, cultures and areas as well, even just locally. Because um, mm -hmm. we've got obviously students and private renters, so everyone really is just one community downstairs. It does get um, busy, but it's mm -hmm. never too busy to go down there. So yeah. We do get a lot of people playing pool. That's one of the yeah. favorites. Um, and we're uploading, uploading, upgrading downstairs this year. Um, with some new stuff, so hopefully it'll be a bit more interactive. So the students this year picked an American football table, so we're having that installed ready. <laughs> um, but we do get people having food and stuff downstairs, a lot on the student nights, when it's normally a Thursday in Bath. Yeah. You'll find downstairs is quite busy, people bring their food downstairs and share with each other. Oh, that's um, nice, yeah. In a pre-Covid world, that was really common. Yeah. Um, so loads of people, especially on a kind of Thursday to Sunday, You'd always have people downstairs, whether you're bringing your pizza in and just end up sitting with your friends downstairs, or mm. you've made stuff upstairs together, but actually you can take it all downstairs and eat together. Um, we found a lot of people did that last year, which was really nice to, to see. And how many rooms do you have in the whole building? So we've got 94 student studios. Mm. Um, we've got 108 beds in the building altogether. We're actually having some um, 
seating areas put out here and some chill out zones so all of mm. this is going to be laid out and have bean bags but you just go on the website choose your city choose your budget like you can do loads of filters and then it shows you like all the options and then when you go to book it it's also free cancellations because of COVID-19 which is amazing and yeah and then you just like book it for the year and they do like a contract and everything and it's basically the same as if you were to get uni accommodation. I think they have like over 20,000 listings on there. So it's a lot more options than just the uni one. So it's definitely worth looking on there. I'll leave the link below. And if you do sign up, just to let you know, it's an affiliate link. So I will get commission. I think it's really good for someone that still wants to socialize a bit because they've got like the big communal areas but then you got your own privacy because you still got your own kitchen bathroom and everything and then as for the postgrad accommodations which are from the university so i the mo the one i know the most about is pulled on court because that's you know i showed it and i think that's amazing but what i do know is that they have limited space for postgrads i think it's like not guaranteed from the university and about the other ones i actually don't know like i've not seen them but i know that they are in really good locations to be honest because i know that one of them's at the bottom of widcombe hill and the uni is at the top of widcombe hill so you could just like get a bus up and it's really close but yeah i think that's pretty much everything i have to say about accommodation i hope this was useful to you guys that are applying i think the applications are open like today or something thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video